Well, you're probably asking yourself, what's the video going to be about today? You're looking about it. You're looking at it, actually. What's going on, guys? It's Thursday, almost it's Friday. Every day I mess that up. I can't possibly figure out why. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to be working on that rototiller today. Hopefully get her up and running. I actually just checked the mail. And I got the uh, carb gasket in there, the bottom end gasket. So it's pretty sweet. I thought there. I was like, wow, this is an awfully thick gasket. And I realized, oh, yeah, that's right. I ordered two. Always order two of everything. Uh, so yep, so we're gonna reassemble this carburetor today. I just pulled her out of the bucket of chem dip It's been sitting in there for the past three days, maybe even longer, maybe four or five days. I forget when I put this in. Um, but we got that thing to reassemble today. Then, uh, I don't know, it might even still be paint chips in my hair. I actually just finished up uh, doing power wash in the house. So all that's left to do is let the thing dry and scrape a few more stuff away and then we can throw a new coat of paint on it. Uh, I know yesterday I forgot to uh, put the put the pictures in the uh, video yesterday and I probably am going to forget tonight so I took some pictures with my phone there and you guys can probably just uh, you know take a quick little peek at it going this way I guess. Also uh, I have the uh, power washer up to 6500 PSI that haunted the power washer but anyway so uh, yeah this is the house I'm working on. Here's uh, one side of it, as you can see up at the top there, it's all scraped away and everything. Back side of it. We're doing the entire house, soffits, everything. There's the front porch, it was all pretty well beat up and everything. Well, it's pretty well beat up. Soffits underneath the bitch to do. And there's the uh, pet prowl washer, you know, that's just regular 33,000 PSI and then you jump over to, yeah, that was it, um, 6,500, I'd say, PSI, really, just burying the needle. I was like, wow, this thing's really hauling ass. Uh, what's that picture of? Oh, bunny. I took a picture of a bunny today. See? The wildlife. But, uh, yeah, so we got everything all finished up. And there's the other side of the house there, but, you know. Typical uh, New England home when you get asbestos shingles and you don't prime it right and uh, you know a few years down the road it's just going to be peeling all over the crease place and that's what's been going on is I want to say about three to four layers of paint on it. I say one of the layers for definite is lead paint and maybe the other one but I'm not really too sure. But the one thing I noticed that all these neighbors have in common is they're all old. You know what else they have in common? They all have a lot of old scrap metal. Oh yeah. So, uh, you know, when we're working, the lady's like, hey, do you guys want this or this? And, you know, just regular scrap metal. And uh, we got a refrigerator to take out of there and a few bikes and stuff like that. And uh, not worth saving right like that. They're all really rusted up real bad, like almost to the point where the rod, they've been sitting behind a garage. And, um, so we're going to haul those out, and then uh, one of the other neighbors came over today, he's like, hey, do you guys, uh, I don't know, he just started talking about some war stories or something like that, and he's like, um, we moved out, and I said, hey, if you get any scrap metal, we'll be more than happy to take it from you. He's like, shit, I got a whole mess of scrap metal. So we go over to his house, and we get um, a bunch of electrical conduct pipe, and um, just a few oddball stuff, and I'll show you guys that later on or something like that. Um, then, as I'm talking with the guy, I happen to see in the next house over, they're remodeling it, and they have a bunch of aluminum screens. Oh, yeah. Grab quite a bit of the aluminum screens. A bunch of these guys. So, I'll be cutting those up later. Getting all the steel out of them. So then, as I'm in the dumpster, I, I look across the street, and what do I see? More scrap metal. Oh, yeah. So I look across the street and the guy's got like a whole mess, he must have just been redoing his gutters or something like that. And uh, I left him a note seeing if he wants me to take a scrap metal for him. He's got like in a pile of mess of all kinds of junk and stuff in there. So I was like, you know what, maybe this guy will give me some scrap metal. So, I don't know, what a score that was, all in one neighborhood. So, anyway, so uh, I'm going to continue putting this carburetor back together. Just got done blowing all the stuff out, scraping off all the old gasket material. And, um, yeah, I'm hoping to get this thing actually running up today. I already picked up the new belt a few days ago, I think I said that. So there's the new belt. And uh, we got the engine sitting down here, so. 
Yeah, should be a pretty good day. Um, everything should bolt up pretty quick. I've never really had any problems with this guy before, so. Yeah. Look at that little oil breather guy. This is a little tiny guy. Dirty old five horse. So here's this thing. This is a 1995. Not bad shape. But, um, yeah. So that's what we got going on, guys. And, uh, that's what we're doing. So, I'll keep... <laughs> Whew, gotta wait for the chem dip there for a second. Woke me right up. Uh, so anyway, I gotta get back to what I'm doing. Listen to the radio, and, uh, yeah, what we got going on now? Lady Antebellum. Yeah, they're yeah, alright. Well, the motor's starting to look like a motor again. Just got that little air cover box thingy on it, but, uh... Yeah, it looks a little better. It took a little bit trying to get all the linkages and everything set right because there's the one choke arm there. It's kind of sort of a bitch to do, but I finally got her on. So, yeah. But I guess uh, I can throw that little guy on there. I did the oil while I was on. I pretty much did all the mechanical stuff on the bench here. And now all I got to do is just bolt the thing down to the chassis. And it'll be a done deal. So... No further ado, and drag that guy over here, and uh, we'll throw it right on there. Although I might actually, I'm gonna finish this up. Eh, you know what? Nah. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw it on tonight. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna do, do it, but I guess I am. So screw it. Ready to get a new spark plug in it, so it's pretty much a done deal there. Nice and shiny. There's already kind of sort of new one in there, but it. It looked old on the outside, and I don't want whoever was going to sell it to be like, Oh, you didn't replace the spark plug, you know what I'm saying? But, whatever. They're cheap anyway, like two bucks. Maybe a buck if that. So, I guess I'll uh, drag this guy over here. We'll throw the motor on real fast. Actually, I might clean up that uh, chassis a little bit. Cleaned up the twines. Pretty good. I got up all the, all the grass and shit that was wrapped around up in there. So those are all cleaned up and stuff. But I think I want to clean up this uh, thing first because it's just a wee bit dirty. Yep. Oh well. All right. Well, I got the uh, motor all mounted up. I got the brand new belt on, as you can see in there. All nice and nice. But I ran into one little problem here. It looks a lot worse than what it actually is. Um, there's this one screw in the far back there. Uh, I didn't even know there was supposed to be a screw in there, so I didn't uh, put the screw in there, and sure enough, all the fuel leaked out. So I actually just got done putting the new screw in, tested it all out, and it seems to be running fine. It doesn't leak anymore. This is actually, right now, it's just oil, because I wanted to make sure the screw went in perfect and sat right. But uh, I'd say it's about 95% done. All I gotta do is just um, pretty much just give it a quick little wash off, and I like to Somehow, I'd probably just put up a little toggle switch or something like that for this little kill wire. It used to be in here, but it, it broke off, so I, I'm unable to really hook it up. So I'll just put, I don't know, one wire coming off of like a bolt or something like even, uh, I don't even know. Maybe I can do something from this bolt here. Run a little wire, then a little toggle switch, and on, off, on, off type deal, you know. I don't know, I'll figure it out, but uh, I'd say this thing's 95% done. I think I'm going to uh, bring those screens in and I'll start uh, chopping those up. Just for the hell of it. Well, there was 15 screens there. Key word was. I'll tell you what, these older ones here are pretty damn thick. Look at how thick that is compared to the newer ones. I think there's a new one right here. Like, talk about a difference. The newer ones came apart a lot easier too. Like, there's another newer one. Like, compare that to that. Keep in mind, there's stuff on the inside, but look at the outside. Compared to the inside. Yeah, it's not focusing, but you get the idea. I said there's a good about. I don't know, maybe 25, 30 pounds of uh, aluminum there, and I think uh, tomorrow I gotta grab uh, the stuff, the rest of the stuff that's in the dumpster up the street, and I'll probably grab some of that stuff. I know there's screens and stuff in there too, so I'll probably grab that. 
So um, should be pretty good. I, I think I got maybe about I want to say close to about 200 pounds of aluminum uh, sitting outside, so it's pretty good. And uh, if I get those aluminum gutters, that'll definitely bump up the price and stuff like that. And uh, I actually have a guy that gave me a bunch of stuff today, the electrical conduct. He gave me some aluminum gutters, but they just show up those tiny pieces. I think what I'm going to do is, right above the door on the outside here, I might actually throw one up. I mean, it's, it is actually like a perfect size, just enough to where it would fit up there. So I might just go from one end, like, wherever it starts, right about here, and then just end it right out there, and just put a little drain spout right there, and a little cap at the end, and it should work pretty good. I don't have to worry about getting wet anymore, and that would actually uh, reduce the uh, amount of water that's been coming in here lately. I've, I've noticed this in this one area, in case I see the ring mark, what it is, is this bottom seal on the door, I think, is bad. Um, it's not the masonry work that I did, it's actually this bottom seal is not sealing properly. So I might have to get some uh, some of that really good weather stripping stuff. But, uh, you know, the door was cheap. I think it was like 140 bucks for the whole door with the lock. It was just one of those cheap Home Depot deals on sale. Still got to fix the leak that's uh, been coming in over here too. Still a little puddle right there, but... I have to dig up over in Jim's yard and I haven't got his permission yet. I keep on forgetting to ask him. I don't want to dig up his uh, bushes that are in the corner without him knowing, you know. Even though it is our property, we actually own, I think it's like three, well, in total away from this garage, from like this corner is like three feet away from it. It's quite a bit. And we actually own about 16 inches of his driveway, which is, it's the weirdest set up over there because they had no room so we had to give them some room I guess I don't know, way back in like the 1920s when the house was built <laughs> you know but um yeah so and the electrical conduct that the guy gave me isn't like the cheap thin stuff like nowadays it's the old 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 school shit like it's heavy shit so yeah made up pretty good today with scrap my loss for sure so I think uh I was gonna go tomorrow and cash my load, but now that I know that I got more stuff coming in, I'll probably wait till next week and we'll cash it in, and uh, I get some weights and stuff like that. And um, the guy actually gave me a couple of these weights. This is a five pounder. So, season row book. I actually have a couple of uh, uh, twenty pounders. I think there's uh, four twenty pound weights sitting in my basement. I'm actually gonna save those for a lawn tractor to create a a weight in the back so yeah but I'm not gonna save the ones that he gave me the ones that he gave me are pretty rusty looking like this one this one's actually not too bad compared to the other ones but I'll cash them in don't need them uh, gotta get parts ordered for this thing so we get this thing out of here oh, found some more aluminum and every, every little bit helps you know <laughs> but uh yeah Man, I missed out on a pretty killer deal yesterday on a full place, fully enclosed trailer. Uh, actually, I missed out two days ago, I guess we'll say. Uh, dealership or someone posted a, a uh, full place, fully enclosed snowmobile trailer. Fucking the thing needed a little bit of paint work, but the thing was awesome. Two grand the dude wanted. I was like, damn, freaking missed out on that deal. But I think we're going to go on to probably grab that one that's down in uh, Rhode Island there. I was telling you guys about, it's like a half trailer, half, yeah, I can probably draw it up real quick. I'll show you guys, because I, I know a few of you guys have asked, what the hell am I talking about? It's pretty much, you get a trailer, it's 20 feet long, you get dual axles, axle there, axle there, then they have just a regular camshell topper, so there's that piece that piece and then there's that piece and then there's the back wall that comes down something that looks just like mine and the back's all open so that's uh, possibly going to be in the near future it's got brand new tires and rims on it uh, brakes has the brake system on it so should be pretty cool it's got like the one little slant up in the front there and then the other little guy and then the other guy it looks like my uh, 10 foot trailer that's sitting outside only this is a 11 foot topper and then the 10 foot's on the back 
so it's it's different, you know. It's definitely a homemade deal, just someone threw a camshell topper on a uh, four-place trailer, but you want to know something? It works for me. So, friggin' in and pray grabbing that one. I haven't really found another cheaper trailer under $2,000 for a four-place four fully enclosed, so maybe another year, maybe another two years down the road I'll get one, you know. This would be the uh, second year that I've had that trailer that's sitting outside there, so eh, we'll go with it, I guess. But, uh, yeah, the shocks for my truck should be coming in soon. I've already done a little bit of looking at it. I think I'm just going to probably just take the entire truck bed off, the 8-foot bed. Uh, I'll probably have to have my dad help me and probably someone else just to grab the back end. I looked at it, it's only like full bolts for the whole back of the bed itself. And, um, what is it? Uh, you get the wiring harness for the rear tail lights and the wiring harness for the, uh, trailer hitch and that's just one little plug and then there's just the uh, fuel you know the fuel guzzler piece and that's just a regular little plumbing clamp so I can just unscrew that so I think I'm just gonna go that route be a little bit easier those bolts I've looked at and they're pretty rusted in there so yeah probably um, not next week but the following week I plan on getting that done along with the exhaust manifold that's gonna get into the shop Probably maybe late next week, if not the following week, early Monday or Tuesday. So should be pretty good. It's gonna cost me about 400 bucks to get it done. So whatever. Um, I had to send back the remote for the Saber Cat. Uh, the remote started there. That was all busted up. I called up a few dealerships. They all said it was a remote receiver. Um, so I had to send that back today, and I should, probably should get another one in within a couple of weeks anyway, about another two weeks. So. No rush there. Um, I plan on late October getting the Z or T800 finished, done, completely ready. Um, then we can move on to the other projects like the Sabercat doing a Speedwork Stage 1 kit on it and stuff like that. So it should be a fun little project there. But, you know, all stuff to pretty much come, I guess. We still got to make money in order to bring the stuff in. But, you know. I actually got the recoil in for the uh, for the steel up there, the steel saw. I got that in yesterday, I think it is. I never already lost it. What did I do with that, actually? I never brought it back in. Uh, huh. Huh, I could have sworn I put it in here. Yeah, I'll have to dig around, but I know I got it somewhere. I don't know. Now I'm starting to wonder things. I had it here yesterday. I don't know. I have to look around for that. But uh, I hope to do the full rope in this thing soon. So, pretty much all it is, just the damn fucking elastic thing snapped on it. I mean, I can still use it, but I'm afraid it might break. Oh well. Anyway, guys, hopefully the video is a little bit longer than yesterday. I made up for it today. Just did a little nine minute conversation with you guys, but. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Until then, go scrap them. Find some aluminum, bust it up, and then cash it in. It's probably about, you know, six bucks sitting right there. Can't beat it. Oh, yeah. That's aluminum, too. Yeah.